Over here sits a 1985 Pontiac Fiero Sport. They only made 23,823 of them. This one's been sitting here for about 17 years and I know that because it's my car and I'm the one that abandoned it here. Great. Today I'm going to try to get her running again and driving. Welcome to Vice Grip Garage. So Jessica and I actually drove this car to high school when we were dating, you know, way back in the day. And we parked it because of a clutch secondary cylinder, which I actually picked up this morning for $24. Hindsight, I guess I should have just borrowed some money or pawned a tool or something, but it is what it is. So let's walk around it and we'll see how she's well, it hasn't held up at all, but we'll see what we got anyway. So if you've never seen a Pontiac Fiero, they're a little bit odd, kind of like a rubber crutch. It was the first two-seater Pontiac since 1938, and Fiero apparently means 27 different things in five different languages, like very proud, fierce, bold, cruel, severe in Italian, or, you know, ferocious in Spanish or wild. Guy can kind of take his pick, I guess. How I know this is an 85 Sport, which I had forgotten, is the PM3 and the FP2. They got a chart on the Google machines. You can kind of look that up. And I feel terrible, honestly, guys, because this car was absolutely cherry when we parked it. I'll kind of show you this door. Kind of everything looked like that but along came a really devastating storm i can't remember what year it was but you could see how big the hailstones were they were like tennis ball grapefruit size and just destroyed this car all the glass obviously the paint and unfortunately all the cars around it you can see all the glass is just gone more hail dents than this guy. It should run. I mean, it ran when we brought it here. It didn't have first and reverse. And that's because of that clutch cylinder in the back here. There's actually a master up front and one back here. And I think I remember trying to fix on it, but couldn't quite get it done. So if we could figure out some fuel and it still has spark, throw a battery in her, maybe we'll get lucky today. My goal would be, though, try to get that cylinder fixed, bleed the clutch system, and see if we could just, you know, drive this thing around a little bit. Well, as you fellers know, I always like to start in the trunk, which in this unit, she's up here, and she's got the easy reach handle. You just come right down through here. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah. Well, really nothing. I know for a fact, I never used the spare or the jack or any of this. So this is all factory. She's never been touched up here. And doesn't look like anyone's robbed any parts. So here's the master cylinder for the clutch. You can see it because it says clutch. And then we've got AC and all the fans and stuff is in here. Looks just fine. I don't know if we got any juice in that yet. Uh, a little bit. One's dry. We'll leave that off to remind us. Oh, looks like someone's maybe tried to revive my car because that was the original key cylinder and there's a shiny new one in it. Let's, uh, let's just get in here. Oh, we might have a hornet's nest in there. Boy, she's on the ground. Oh! We got redneck diamonds just everywhere. We got a bunch of them. So this girl had 117,000 miles on her. Someone took the shift knob, 
looks like the radio has been nabbed out of her look at this purple confetti kind of shiny stuff that's factory upgrade option she's peeling off down here but that's okay <coughs> definitely not going to pull on the e-brake she might stick i think these had speakers in the headrest but i can't remember nothing in there something growing out of the floorboard not quite sure what that is so the problem we're going to have is i don't have the round key and that's going to be to get into the engine compartment here so i think i'm going to have to actually drill this out to get this up so we can work on this thing and then we'll do the right thing and just kind of tape it down or bungee cord or something like that the plates are gone i have no idea where the plates went i can't remember if i pulled those off or not the tires in the ground this one somehow is still holding air and let's see that one's all the way in the ground flat same thing here i think it's actually sitting on the frame or the control arms up here she's really down so hopefully those will take some air but let's start with the engine see if we can even get this thing to run so i'll go grab a drill and a drill bit that's probably the wrong size and see if i can get this thing drilled out see i wonder if a guy can just jam a drill bit through here and maybe it'll just open you just don't know until you break it let's go for high speed Can a guy get something in there to just twist on it? Uh oh. Hey. Oh. Oh boy. Well, let's bring this down to about a. No dead bodies yet. I did find a 3 8 wrench. Yeah, it's a back pocket find. She came out of nowhere on a horse. Anyway, let me get you in here. Well, here's what we got. The great news is that's a 2.5 liter Iron Duke. Probably one of the most reliable, indestructible engines ever built. Plus they get 30 to 50 miles per gallon. That's mind boggling. The bad news is it has two decades of earth. Kind of just packed into the fuel electro digital shooter make it happener so that's kind of concerning the battery is in it we got to pop off the delorean covers over here and now we can get more access to her absolutely nothing back here i thought maybe i'd find an old pair of cowboy boots mine or a football jersey or at least my wrestling shoes dang it been looking for them for years i just they've eluded me Dump bees level 12 another one. I don't know why this air cleaner lid's missing it kind of bothers me It's such a random thing to steal Oh, yeah, just a little battery. I don't think I got one that little Oop. Whatever that was is brittle and broke off All of the sparkulator wires are still on there I remember putting these fancy braided units on back in the day. Doesn't look like mice have really eaten anything. I don't want to try the throttle before we get out, you know, the state of Vermont out of the thing here. And there is absolutely zero oil in it. That's fine. What I'm going to do now is just throw a socket wrench on the tranquilizer down here see if she still spins over a little bit worrisome since there's no oil on the thing not sure why that happened either oh well all right 
across your toes. Oh. She's tight, but we got some turnage. Oh, there goes my finger. Oh, now she's she's coming back around. There we go. Wow, give me my wrench back. Battery shopping. Got my tester with me. That one's dead. Dead battery. That one's dead. This one's gonna be good. Dead battery. Wow, that one's dead. Well, a guy did the right thing. Found a marine battery and just put her on the roof rack. But before we see if this thing cranks over, I gotta get all this stuff out of there somehow. The guy's starting to put three and two together. This is probably more evidence that someone was trying to fire on this. With the new key and air cleaner lid gone, they were probably giving her the huffing gas. Wow. They got digitals hooked to the air screen. What even are these things? I don't know. I should know. Guy should start carrying a can of that keyboard cleaner and just whoosh, you know, oh, hey, that worked. <laughs> what did you know? Your mouth makes wind. <laughs> oh, mouse poop right in the mouth. Keep going. It's fine. <laughs> and I don't see anything in the intake. Thank goodness. This still works even. I'll be dipped. Well, I'm going to hook this up. And then we'll see if she uh, cranks. If she does roll over, I'm only going to spin on her a couple times since there's no oil in her. Bring the thunder! <laughs> well, we've got positive turnage. I don't think that their battery connection system is going to work though. Not spinning fast enough to start it. I might have to go down and get the right size battery. Dang it. Guy's going to snag this out quick. You know, I almost packed my handy dandy little sight post battery wrench, but then I told myself, you'll never need that. And then I also told myself, if you tell yourself you're not going to need it, then you are really going to need it. And then I also told myself, well, what are the chances of that? <sighs> I need it. Also, I don't see grasshoppers where I'm from very much anymore. I've already had three of those in the mouth. Additionally, Working on a black car in the direct sunlight is hot. And I'm talking hotter than here a nightly in a night now. Guy did swing down to Larry's battery barn and picked up this Group 75 for $28. I'll be dipped. That's a good deal. Moses, that's hot. Get out of there. Come on now. Yeah. Wanted to keep my socket. No way. I'm gonna throw a couple quarts of oil in this thing before we spin on her anymore. I got this one for a specific reason. It has a really cool track hole on it. And also, it was the cheapest one there. It's a diesel oil, so it's actually got all the dinosaurs and vitamins you want for these old engines. Wow, what kind of a seal is this now? That'll probably work. We'll test on it never again. Got my Lone Wolf 6000 trigger hooked up here. and I had a lot of questions on this. and Really all it is is just a wire going to the ignition post on the starter relay. Which is just on when you roll the key forward to start. And then one to the positive battery cable on the starter too. You can actually just use wire and touch them together or a momentary switch or you could man up not be lazy and just hit it with your plier but this is definitely for me <laughs> spins way better so fresh lightning cube is doing its job now let's move on and see if we got fuel and spark i don't have a plan but what i think i will do is grab this here fuel filter and snip it out and then we'll test on her and see if we're getting any fuel shooting out. 
and what it looks like i think the fuel door is over here yeah so i've got about two and a half gallons of bad gas from the mid 90s we'll dump that in and then see if we're pumping anything and then if we are what she's looking like and then we can move on to the lightning whirler which is down here on this unit guy's got his tools just sprayed out on this beautiful buick special here and they're just so hot i can't even touch them so i'm going to do the right thing and just leave them there and suffer through it i think all right come on oh yeah yeah i kind of just bent it a little bit that's fine you just got to pretend that little stuff doesn't happen i got fuel right now right here so it might have already been pumping up some delicious stuff. That seal is gone. We'll pretend we didn't see that. Oh, yeah, that smell. I missed you. Guy was about ready to take a chainsaw to the gas lid here. I was struggling to find the old ejectilator. Then I remembered you got to roll the seat forward. And there's a clip back here. You got to pull on that. She shot right open. Only gonna put a couple gallons in here. This stuff's expensive. Oh, I'm leaking it all over the ground. Great. Well, as long as 36% of it goes in the car, that's just fine. Well, there's definitely enough gas spilled to start an amazing fire. I like these rubber rings, so you don't get the old shock or you know snagged up. But you hit them with the gas, and they expand. All right, keep your eyeball on this guy here. We're gonna crank on it for a second, see if we get any juice. I'm seeing no juice. So, fuel pump, L not happy. On this particular unit here, she's got an in-tank pump. Not fun. But I'm going to try the simple thing first, which is just a fuse. And then it could be a ground, or it could be a fuel pump relay, or it could actually just be a bad pump. But if it's not the fuse, I'm going to move on to just seeing if I can get this thing to fire before I worry about dinking with the pump. Guy's got to get way down in here. Figured out my Hornet issue, by the way. They're just, uh... Coming out of this door like crazy. Anyway, down here on the fuse block should be this first red one. Wow. She's good. Great. Well, not the easy thing. So let's just find something flammable and see if she fires. Oh, well, you can see how good this gas is. Well, here we go. Almost two decades. See if this thing's gonna fire off. He is on. Way too much gas. Here we go. Fired right off. Uh, let's do it again just because. Now really bad valve train let's just keep going you know it's got a build on that oil pressure I'm hearing a relay clicking back here still nothing working in the fuel pumpage situation but the valve train is already starting to sound better so I think she's building just enough pressure. I'm gonna find something that I can see if we can run it a little bit longer. This will work. It's got a skull that says extremely flammable. I like that. I'm gonna try to keep it running long enough where I can reach down here and see if we got any exhaust restrictions. Sometimes the mice turn the mufflers into motels. Mice muffler motel. Anyway, here we go.
It's not even smoking. Valve train sounds fine. She came right out of it. Uh, we just got to figure out some sort of Mickey Mouse fuel situation. Maybe try to do a swap rooney on the fuel pump relay. Doubtful very that that's going to do anything. Might just have to hook up a clicky clacky and we'll make some sort of explosive gasoline kind of thing back here. And then we're on to the clutch. Dang it, forgot about that. This might be hard for you to see there, feller, so scoot in a little bit, but I think I pulled the fuel pump relay here, and you can see some big corrosion in there. And those reside down here. They're mounted up in there. I just kept bending on it until it came off the firewall, but this is really corroded too. So I'm going to do the right thing and just try to clean this one up first before I spend more money and see if that'll work. Probably not. So I cleaned up this relay. Actually, I did both of them, just because. And that didn't do anything. So I came over here to the ECM reset connector, cleaned that up. And wouldn't you know it? Well, that did nothing. So the last thing I'm gonna try is the ALDL connector, which is in the center console, because the computer, I think, sits back here or something. And I could jump the fuel pump, supposedly, right from that bad boy. And if that doesn't work, then I think we're just going to move right on to the old trusted clicky-clack pump. So I popped this little thing out here, and I saw a computer box machine, so I think I'm on the right track. Pulled out all these screws on here, so I think we can just rip this out now. Yeah. Okay. Oop. Be careful. Watch the seats now. And uh, we'll set that up there. What have we got? What is it? Engine control computer. Well, that seems serious. And here's that gadget we're after. Apparently, you can do a lot of bleep bloops with this thing. I just got to figure out the pins now. And then we got to run some juice right in there. Kind of looks like a DeLorean setup. Liking it. Well, supposedly... I could just put 12 volts to this little guy over here and we should hear that fuel pump run or it's going to start a fire. Either way, I'm ready. This was holding the grill in on an Oldsmobile Omega, but it seems fine. We got a dead fuel pump. Great. It's difficult for me to talk about, but I'm an honest guy all the way to my hip bone. I forgot a fuel pump. But... If you haven't figured it out yet, I'm here at Zweifel Motors in Piedmont, South Dakota, and he's got more cars and parts and tools and everything you could ever imagine. So, of course, he hooked a guy up. I got this one here. No name on it, but it'll probably even work better than my Edelbroken I usually carry. Got a battery. This is a race operation, so this will only feed the fuel pump. Got some Gates fuel line. She's high pressure, none of that low stuff. Cheapest hose clamps you could find. Not sure what that is. Tape have never opened. And when you're playing with electricity, you know, positive, negative, make sure you wire everything with the same colored wire. It just makes it better. So I'm gonna get this fuel pump. I think what we'll do is put the gas in right next to the battery, get it as close as possible wire all this fuel in over the battery and then bring her in here i took the filter off this already and i think we'll just bring it right on in there full pressure and then we'll see what this says well there we go that seems fine this is good Get some lineage something like yeah sure good enough yeah come on well, I gotta sharpen this already. Here's the final setup. I mean, it's looking hot. Just tested it, got some fuel out of her. Little tip for you to keep the fires down at your ranch. Always switch your negative. Keep your positives nice and tidy. And especially if you're bringing like switches and stuff into the old compartment there, always switch on your negatives and you're not dragging electricity everywhere. I'm gonna leave this hang like that because this is gonna be our on off. 
like that and button this down and then we're ready to fire on it again let's give her another go fuel pump engaged he is on bring the thunder <laughs> She just, it ain't squirt light. So, I got other ditch issues going on. That's bottle feeding it again. I just felt like if I didn't hear it run, I just, I might be sad. Now what? I don't know. This is why most fellers shy away from these TBIs, which I think stands for Terminator Ballistics Incorporated. Could be wrong. But anyway, I'm gonna start treating it like a carburetor and just start beating on it. And Maybe that'll bring it around. Probably not. This doesn't work. I'm gonna get a nine volt battery and we'll just test that injector. It's spraying. That was awesome. I don't know why she died out on us. Let's get fuel. Got enough fuel? Oh, the pump's on it. So I'm thinking this might not be enough fuel pump for her, but I'm going to see if I could at least get it to idle on this for a little bit. How does a 
guy even, how are you supposed to get this off? I just never seen nothing like this. Okay, I think that's full. She runs like a kitten and a bowl of milk. These Iron Dukes are just great engines. Onto the clutch here. And again, we got that reservoir up front we looked at earlier. And I can't get open again. Perfect. And then back here is the cylinder. And when you apply the clutch, it pushes this rod out right here. And then this rod engages the clutch fork. And then your shifter Rooney cables. Select your gears there. I already broke this line off. That's good. So I just got these two bolts right here to get out. We'll get that new one in there. Not going to work too late tonight though. I'm out here in the Black Hills of South Dakota. It's beautiful. Got the Salvage Davidson with me. So I'm just going to get some wind in the eyebrows here pretty soon before the sun goes down. But I think I'll at least try to break these other two bolts off first. Got her out here. Popped the boot off to see if the seal was leaking at all. And it wasn't. And then I got to looking closer and remembered what happened was the bleeder screw snapped off. I think I started having clutch problems and, you know, maybe gave her a little too much pepper. So that snapped off. But it just goes to show you, you never know why people park cars. If they say I parked it because of a water pump or an alt matter, it might actually be. Back then, I couldn't afford that part and decided just to park it. So I got another one, but I think I'm gonna call it it for today. The sun's just, she's getting down on me. So I'm gonna go ride and then we'll be back tomorrow. Good morning, day two. I'm already at it here. Basically what I did is I put a can of Berryman in the tank here and I'm trying to get this subjector spray, you know, to come around, and it's getting better. It used to kind of just spray wherever it wanted to, so I'm hoping that cleans that up a little bit. A battery was dead this morning, and I finally got this cap off, and she's was pretty full. So I'm gonna wait and see if we can get the thermostat to crack open. Let it sit here and idle a little bit. Here's the new unit. Guy's got to reuse the push rod, lever, stick, clutch mover thingamajigger. So I ran that through the cheek poker, cleaned her up a little bit, bolted her on, and then we got to try to bleed it. And that's really tricky on these Fieros. About 17 different ways you could do that. Gravity, vacuum, reverse pressure, fluid injection, the old pump method. Thing is, if you get any air in these systems, you're not gonna get first or reverse. And if I remember right, that was the problem I had. Although, maybe it was just a bad clutch and I snapped this off thinking I just needed to bleed it. I can't quite remember, but we're about to find out. Tell you what, it was really smart of me to get this radiator hose 714 degrees Celsius. That way I could just lay my arms on it in here while I work. Also, this plastic air tube thing is about to be thrown into the next county. Okay, that is in. And you can tell by the oil. It started bleeding on her. And I'm going to try to do it this way because great things happen when you cut corners. Don't want to pump on them. And you don't want the old reservoir to go low. So I'm just jamming a piece of wood into the e-brake that will probably never release. And once it's held down, I'll crack it. And I'll repeat that procedure a few times. But what's coming out of here is basically like mud. So I'm just going to keep going until I get stuff that looks like maybe chocolate milk. It's an improvement. Well, this actually kind of seems to be working. Hook your peepers on this rod over here. And you'll see that we've got enough pressure now. It's actually pushing that rod. 
there it's coming back so that would be engaging and disengaging the old gear selecto plate so I'm just gonna keep going a few more times well I think I'm gonna stop there it seems like I got pedal but that's judging from the clutch bleeder board 400 yeah, and the reservoir is looking pretty nice and clean now and uh, I think we might be in decent shape just kind of yeah anyway so now what do we do now I guess we got to fire it up and once it's running I'll just try to jam it in first gear if she goes in without you know that sound I think we're good then we're on the tires and well we got to move stuff too it's just there's things in the way great I tore the seat cover off and took all the arts and crafts out at once which that's great but now I've got level 14 black moldage well whatever it's gonna climb in fire it up see what we get into gear I killed it we're in business that was really easy wish I would have done that a long time ago dang it there's the fan for the first time so that works I guess She's catching on her wind and cooling down a little bit. I'm missing an antenna. Let's see if these tires air up. This one, I'm gonna say maybe 4% chance. I can reach in here and feel the steel belt, but you never know. Come on, no way. There it goes. Let me dig the rocks out of the inside of the tire. I'm probably not going to put my hand on it actually. This is crazy. This is officially the worst condition tire. That has ever aired up for me, I think. They call them May Pops. They're kind of exciting. I don't know how much wind to give it. I don't think it's going to hold much. I think that's probably good. If someone wants to explain to me how this is holding air, go on ahead and do that for me. Over here is where I could reach my hand in and feel the belt. And similar over here, some stuff got blown up inside of it. But you can clearly see it was sitting all the way to the rim. Who knows how many years of the 17 it's been sitting here, it was flat. That's pretty crazy. The other side is similar, so let's go over there and see if we can get some air in those. Same story here. The belt is actually exposed. We'll see uh, if this one will hold any air. I'm kind of hoping they'll do because, well, I don't have any more of these tires or wheels. Here we go. Unbelievable. What is going on? I don't have this good of luck with my good tires. two for two place your bets you can pause it comment below will this one also air up and then you can come back around and 
comment if you were right. Come on now. This is, I've never, I've never had this happen. I don't hear leaks or nothing. That's about all I'm willing to do. Just, you know, good tire. This one's still holding. This one had air in it when we showed up. That one's doing fine. And this one is still doing fine. Oh, that's just the hose leaking. I guess the real test on the old tires is gonna be, once we get them rolling, that's when they're gonna explode on us. So I gotta make sure I spin out right away. Since I'm having such good luck, let's try this one too. Nope. Shoot. I was hoping it'd have a tube in it. Darn. Try the other side. Alright. This one might go. Yeah, there it goes. The old co-op supers. So in order to get the Fiero out, this Diamond T's got to move. This is a cool truck. 1940 Diamond T. And he's actually even got the title of this thing. Really cool truck. Uh, let me show you the frame on this really quick. I always thought this was pretty neat they did this. Look at that. So I'm going to snag onto it. The skid steer here. And I think I'll drag it over there. Kind of clean stuff up, pushed everything over, smoothed out a path. And hoping I can lift the rear up a little bit. And we got some air in the front, so I should be able to kind of wobble it over there, maybe. Well, hey, that worked pretty good. I should have checked. I didn't realize these rears weren't all the way bolted on. So there towards the end, I just scooped her up and I think we'll set her down here. There's plenty enough room to get cars in and out of here still. So now I'll clean up a little bit, see if I can get this thing fired back up. And well, we got to go in reverse for about 87 miles. That's fine. Then, you know, we'll get up here on the hillside and just test on her. Apparently I grew a little bit. Okay. Well, let's see if it'll drive itself out of here. Pedals are so dainty. Power 
our steering wheel. Ooh, I got a mirror over here. And it works. Oh, kind of. Well. What's the issue now? Hey, computer box, do something. Well, this poor starter. Get some! Abandoned ship. So I'm thinking the Bruce Lee clicky clack isn't providing enough fuel pressure for that injector to properly fire. Runs fine if I brake cleaner and open her up. So I'm going to run down to the hardware store and pick up a different clicky clack that maybe has, I think these take up to 13 PSI before I start sending it back to the tank. So I'm gonna go see if I can find one a little bit bigger. Bigger pump and spray pattern looks better. Actually get a little rev out of the girl now. So we will try, this glass got me. We're gonna try to, you know, get her out of here again. I think we can do it this time. I gotta figure out how to get in this thing. It's gotta be a process. Okay. There we go. Reverse. Oh yeah. All of a sudden, I find myself at the top of the hill. I just took the bobcat, put a chain on her, and drug her up here. After two days, I'm driving this thing. And if that means coasting down a hill with the engine idling, I'll take it. Little victories. There's probably no brakes. So basically, I've just got to try to hook this corner here. Yeah, and if I just end up down in them trees somewhere, I don't want to hit that Cadillac though, so I gotta come back this way, but that's pretty much what we're gonna do. Fire it up, dump it first. I gotta hurry before it quits. Ouch.
just enough. You know, she runs pretty good. I'm not gonna brag or anything. Is this a cigarette lighter? Well, there you have it. 17 years and she's running. Just like I remember it. Really uncomfortable and gutless. I'm actually not gonna drive this one home because in a future episode, I'm gonna pick one of you viewers and I'm gonna give this to you. She just needs a fuel pump and a little bit of glass and it's fine. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. We'll see you next time. I just, this way.